We left Volga behind. The endless expanses of Russia stretch before us now. Regretfully, Duke was not destined to see them. Was his death a fault of mine? Was everything that happened on the bridge? It could be. It's a cruel world that we live in. And it's not our responsibility to fix it. We only wanted to pass through. And it was not my fault they screamed for blood. Their zealousness reminded me of the Metro, where people are indoctrinated into a lie. That the world is dead and there's nowhere to go. Anyone who questions it gets fed a different lie. That the war is still going on. Here it's electricity is a sin. Same difference, really. Yeah. Poor dude. Artyom. Artyom. Wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the colonel wants you on the bridge. See you later. Come on, wake up. I'm so sorry about Duke. He was just a boy, really. He kept asking me for advice on how to become more attractive to a girl he knew. What to say to her. He couldn't wait to come back to her, proudly wearing scars and medals. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? A home, for one. A place where we could live. A log cabin on the outskirts of a forest. Or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Well, you know. There's something great in simply going anywhere like this, together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> it certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. Alyosha keeps telling everyone Duke could have jumped off the bridge in time. The others are also holding well. But I... I just unraveled. Of course, I had friends die before. He wasn't looking for death, Duke. He did volunteer for the most dangerous missions, but didn't expect to die. He was looking up to Stepan. Dad. You. Especially you. And he didn't die for nothing, did he? He wanted us to get there, to Yamantau. He wanted us to tell them about Moscow. How we survived there and still haven't given up. How we've been hiding for so long. But when I think of it being you, and not even knowing for sure, I'd never be able to live through it. So, you think I should just let it all out? I don't think that would make me feel better. I've been thinking, back home, we buried our friends at home, and avenged them at home. That home and life there sucked. We were kept there with chains. No, even worse, with lies. And now we are looking for a new home. But here, it's someone else's home, and we are not invited. Right, I've got to get myself under control. Go, Dad wanted to see you. I do enjoy a good character development. Poor girl. Little, 
love bunny. Idiot. Watchmen are not fun. Humanimals. Yeah, fuck that thing. Dog. There's still a music station playing. How long 
have we been on the road for? I've been listening to the radio, too. And there was not a single transmission about any occupying force. There's so much regular chatter. So many stories. Dad says all those are coded transmissions, that they all have hidden meaning, but... Why would they be so secretive? Why aren't they using this railroad? Why don't they at least control its key junctions? Why did they not install any roadblocks? If they are even out here... This is the main transport artery, after all. Maybe they are not here at all. Maybe they never came here, or they are already gone. Though, where to? Remember? Neither Katya nor Crest have ever met them. Though, we seem to be doing just fine even without them. It's like the Middle Ages. That Salantius is treating people like slaves, getting them killed. I can't believe they had it worse without his lies, nonsense, and human sacrifices. And us? We had been living down there for so many years, fighting each other. And nobody even thought you could live outside. Yep. Uncle Artyom! Uncle Artyom! Uncle Tokarev has already set his shop up! Wanna go look? It's so cool! Aww. He's, he's, he's probably dead. Ah, hi, Artyom. See my new place? Fit for a king, I must say. Ah, what do you think of this workbench, eh? Everything is within reach, yet there's so much space left. Most of the stuff you and the guys found outside and gave to me went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. We'll have to keep pitching in like this, too. Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. It's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know? Duke's plate carrier didn't hold the back plate anymore. And he... Well, he just kept joking about it. <clears throat> what was I? Well, I'll be working here from now on. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The Colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Uncle Tokarev! Uncle Tokarev! <sighs> what would you like to ask, Nastya? Uncle Tokarev, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. Well, how are you going to fix the suits then? Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle, and I use a sail stitch. Wow, cool! Can you teach me? I sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Use it to fix her teddy bear. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? Well, sure thing. Oh, but under supervision. Sam is so strict, you know. Hurra! And Uncle Sam isn't strict at all. He's kind. <laughs> all right, look here. I'll show you once. Now we do this. Got that. Yes, and now this way. 
I see. You have got to be careful here. See? Got that. Don't rush it here. I see. Espresso machine? <laughs> oh, a smoke break. That's good. <sighs> oh, this is one mean smoke. Damn, this is rough. Well, <clears throat> nothing we couldn't take. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> Well, you're the right kind of guys. You, the Colonel, Duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. He was a great guy. May he rest in peace. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. You you people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay the debt back, okay? <laughs> So, how do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? Sure thing, so much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hate them. Phew. No, you guys are gonna see the government. So, Batuha, don't be mad, but just tell me. What the hell do you even need them for? No, of course it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's long since gone to shit. So what for, really? I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you, that means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom. We seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough <laughs> space now. I'm just now noticing the no smoke inside. <laughs> that was a full cigarette. I mean, I don't smoke, but that just seems wasteful. Why do you do a teddy bear? Okay, talk to Anna. Not like a so bang wife back. auction. What other plans does our leader have in store? Wait, don't tell me. This is, must be the commander's room. Oh, hey, you got his guitar. Come on in, have a seat. Stepan's putting on a live performance here. So, Artyom, are you up for a jam? Come on, pick the guitar up. I 
I didn't know RDM could RTM could play the guitar. Thank you, Stefan. I'm sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father. He's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Seeing he used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here. Quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bound to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there were lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course. General industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we couldn't leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius at the Skatina had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. <clears throat> <sighs> it kind of got so glum in here. Hmm. Perhaps you, Stepan, could play us something. Sure thing! I think, uh, there's enough tension in this room. Well, guys, the Duke's memory. Look, stop with this funeral mood. It is Duke we are talking uh, about. Up. The colonel's Do waiting for you on the bridge. Came back from the library. Same thing here. Well, yeah, that time he pulled a fast one on us. We had the drinks ready. Sam said everything. Was a good speech, too. Thanks. Well, that is true. Don't be shy. So, Sam ends his speech, and then Duke asks, Where's my drink? <laughs> <laughs> so that is why I say we should wait. He came back from that library. And this, this is nothing. We will pick him up on our way back. If we leave to go back. No, oh, come on! Well, I just think we should still drink to Duke's memory. And if he's alive, that's only a good omen. Sam, what do you say? I'll drink later. Gotta finish cooking. Okay. 
Let's drink. All right, lights. By the way, speaking of omens, let's have a service for him once we come across another church. Bill didn't believe in having met Salantius. I'm also wavering. Well, Salantius' god is definitely a lost cause. But I imagine Duke would like Valhalla, a paradise where fallen heroes spend eternity feasting and fighting, a good fit for all of the people we lost. Yes, this is worth having another drink for. To our guys having fun in Valhalla! Ah. <laughs> uh, guys, there's something I've been thinking about. What does everyone expect of this trip? Duke used to say that he just couldn't spread his wings back home. He was too eager to win that girl over with heroics. He thought that outside he'd have space for that. And why did you come? Well, my heart is aching for true romance. But in the Metro, all women want a solid relationship, a reliable husband, a real provider. <laughs> Enough of that smug smile. It's unbearable. Not that I've had much better luck here so far. As soon as Katia came aboard, Stefan started cooing around her like a peacock. <laughs> you should be happy. Katia's a tough girl. You'd be under her thumb in no time. <laughs> that is unlikely. I'm not the kind of man to upstage his friend in the contest for a lady. Especially when that friend promises to break my arm! <laughs> I'll catch my stroke of luck soon enough. There in Yamantau, women from all over the country have already gathered, waiting for yours truly! <laughs> How about you, Demir? What made you go? Well, uh, at first I just went along with you guys, uh, the Colonel. But even then I thought, this is my chance to make my dream come true. A chance to see Kazakhstan, my people. But first, we must come back to Moscow. Because it isn't fair. People must know that they've put up with enough. They are free. They can live outside now. What do you think about that, idiot? I'm with you, Demir. Yet, freedom is not so simple. There was this freedom fighter, Che Guevara. He died under 40. Comrade Mao, whose book you've been perusing on the other hand, was a strict ruler but lived a long life. Well, we should have expected that from you. <laughs> Weird thing, though, is that you are called idiot. <laughs> I know. It's by his own choice. Because he's so fond of Chekhov. <laughs> Chekhov too, of course. But it's Dostoevsky for the most part, said my friend. <laughs> sure, I read the book too. It's just that I mix them up a lot. Chekhov wrote about that son of Austerlitz, a wounded officer. Powerful imagery. <laughs> you are just killing me. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Sam? Got dreams? You know, I just want to ride my board again, spark a joint up on a beach, and catch that wave. Deep inside, under a grizzled metro dweller, there's still a relaxed Californian inside me. Ah, get out of here! <laughs> so you know, before Dad talked me into joining the Corps, I used to wear my hair long. He told me they'd make a decent citizen out of the total disappointment that I was, and sent me to college once I was discharged. I joined, and they sent me to the Middle East. Wow, so do you hope your guys would pick you up? I don't see them around. Yeah, I don't hold my breath for my guys. 
Once this mission's over, I'll submit my discharge papers. I'll reach the ocean and there. Find a ship, maybe? Oh, yeah. Just imagine it. You arrive on that ship, and they go like... Ah, the Russians are coming! <laughs> <laughs> you are one of us now. You don't really need to go anywhere. If we don't put your Ushanka on, they will sink you on sight. <laughs> I won't. Though I will take my balalaika with me. <laughs> balalaika? <laughs> well... Who has any expectations for our reception at Yamantau? Well, your expectations, Elyosh, are quite obvious, huh? Scantily clad junior officer ladies on the rolling red carpet. Yeah, I'm a simple guy. How about you guys? Well, uh, I hope they will answer a few questions. For example, if there is not a single American within hundreds of miles from Moscow, save for our friend Samuel here, why stay on the ground? I'd put it a bit differently. Did you, dearest High Command gentlemen, know that we in Moscow had to spend 20 years on the ground? Huh, by all means, you can ask those while I'm enjoying my briefing with the junior officer ladies, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the mood for a road trip. Oh, we got ourselves a true traveler here. Yeah. We will have to live and see. You are right. Are you done? Oh, it's even a piano. Checking other stuff first, kind of case. Wait, what does this do? Why, why am I still in France? Person to talk to. Listen, I had a talk with the Ark, and all thanks to Tokura, he got the decoder working. Ark, come in. Come in, Ark. Over. Hey, this is Ark. Hey, uh, identify yourself. Uh, uh, over. This is Colonel Svetoslav Mionnikov speaking. I'm in command of a special operations force. We have received your signal and are currently.
sketchy. So, do you get this now, you doubting Thomas? I'm so excited, my hands are still shaking. Oh, the minister himself! This is incredible! By the way, Artyom, you should take a look at the map. As you can see, we're heading almost straight for the Yamantau complex. Katya and Kress tell me that the line there is in decent condition. Uh, surprising, really. Taking into account the number of priority targets there. 